Hi, I'm Mark, coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Um, got a little bit of a sit rep for you. Um, I've gotten an awful lot of questions about this latest piece of paper that I got from uh, Bill Schutte's office. And I've uh, been asked to explain this, and I think I will explain it. What this is, is a motion that is being put forth to the judge in my county, right? And they, the Attorney General's office, is asking that my judge to put an injunction against my farm, right? That injunction would say that I could not sell any pigs off of my farm in the state of Michigan, at this point in the state of Michigan. All right. Now, there's been an awful lot of questions about that, and I have some questions myself. Um, in the invasive species order, which was issued a long time ago, it says that you cannot sell or offer to sell an invasive species. Well, we've maintained all along we don't have invasive species. We have domestic hog production, and therefore we're not we're exempt. But by this, uh, it is apparent to me that the attorney general's office is still pressing the issue that we have an invasive species on our farm. We, they have never been here. Um, the DNR is the one that dreamt this whole thing up at the behest of uh, industrial ag here in Michigan. And uh, no one has ever been to my farm to even see my animals. You know, I, maybe they see photographs of them or images of them on the internet, but that's it. Now, what this comes down to is the invasive species order says that if I sell or offer to sell an invasive species, that they can arrest me. Arrest me. That means they come and they take me and put me in a police car and take me down and book me, all right? Well, uh, on the 13th of last month, I answered a question, and then uh, my wife put a comment in there, and I, I was in agreement with this, and it said that we have pigs for sale. Now, we didn't say what kind of pigs. We didn't say where we were going to sell them. We didn't say really too much. But then I got this uh, nasty gram from the Attorney General's office. Um, it was from uh, Danielle Yoakum and Kelly Drake. And I'm sorry, girls. I know you don't like me mentioning your name on here. But um, I'm sorry. That's just the way it goes. Uh, you know, wah. You know, you want to take away my livelihood, I, I think I'm going to mention your name. You're the ones that sent the letter to me. Uh, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, my children have to, having to find some other place to sleep, that's hardship to me, too. So I'm sorry, but maybe you can get over that. Um, and, and that uh, letter asked me to voluntarily not breed my pigs and voluntarily not sell my pigs. So they want me at my hand to destroy my own business. And uh, I don't think I ought to do that, right? I think if they have a good law, they ought to just come in, arrest me, and take my pigs, all right? Why don't you do that? I don't think they will. So then what they do is they go to my judge and ask him to do it. This reminds me of when I was a little kid. I had five sisters, and they liked to have girls-only clubs, right? And they would say, this is girls-only. You can't come in here. And I did not acknowledge that as, as law or anything that I should follow. So I would go in there, right? And they'd say... We're going to tell mom. And then they would tell mom. And then nothing would come of it. So it's kind of the same thing. The Attorney General Office doing the work of the DNR, who is doing the work of industrial ag, uh, now they've pushed it down to the local level and they want my judge here in my county to tell me that I can't sell my pigs. I'm sorry uh, if there's any small children listening. I'm going to use a word here, and sometimes it's thought to be vulgar, but I am on a farm. I have to say this. Where I come from, that is called chicken shit. All right, chicken shit. That's what that's called. And uh, so that's who we're dealing with here. Okay? I know that's a little rough, but that's the way it is. Um, so what we did with these guys is we decided that we would uh, call them out a little bit. All right. So here's a couple of guys uh, by the name of, uh, let's see, 
Rusty Hills and Alan Cropsey. I'm told they're the left and right hands of the Attorney General's Bill Schuette. That's what I'm told. So this letter went to them. Uh, they met with a friend of mine here recently, and uh, this friend of mine uh, said that maybe you should talk with Mark about this. This has to do with his farm and his livelihood. Maybe you ought to talk with him about it. And uh, they didn't seem to cotton to that idea, but uh, here's a letter that we sent to them, Mr. Hills and Mr. Cropsey. Um, Mr. Baker's well-documented history of wanting to resolve this problem outside of litigation, but so far has been unsuccessful in obtaining any clarity whatsoever from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources concerning both the invasive species order and subsequent, subsequent ductatory ruling, as it specifies applies to this farm operation. He is in great hope that a meeting can take place and a solution be found. Please contact me, and uh, this was sent by by my lawyer. Uh, okay, so we're calling him out. I'm going on the Dave Janda show next Sunday, and I'm going to talk about this. It's a coast to coast show, and uh, I'm going to continue to educate the public on this this incident that's going on here in the great state of Michigan, which is is truly uh, ridiculous at best. Um, they've out of the blue, the DNR decides that a pig with a curly tail or a straight tail is an invasive species, or a, a pig with a floppy ear or an erect ear is an invasive species. Or, number nine, don't forget this one, they want you to, but number nine read, I quote, other characteristics not currently known to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, but identified by the scientific community. All right, so they're leaving the door open for later on, they can say any pig that has a hole under its tail and poop comes out of it, or something foolish like that. It's no more foolish than straight tail or curly tail. Now, you know, I thought we were adults. I thought we could maybe get this straightened out, but uh, it doesn't seem like we're able to. So I'm going to help you, Mr. Schutte's office. I'm, a I'm offering you a parlay. We can sit down and we can talk about this. I'll come down to your offices and we can sit down and talk about this. And I'm going to give you an out on this, all right? Now, you need to let me know about this here pretty quick because I'm not coming down there on a Saturday, all right? And I go on Jan's show Sunday. All right, that's really not all that I have to talk about. Um, this foolishness is happening because the family farm is being choked out, and there's so few of us. Our Anyone Can Farm program, which we are starting this May, is to combat things like this. There needs to be more of us farmers out on the land, right? Uh, if you haven't noticed, there's not a lot of jobs around. Uh, that's not anything that the farmers caused. Um, but I think what we need to do is we need to put some of our young folks back to work, back on the farm, and I can't think of a better group of people than the people that I served with when I was in the military. A lot of these guys and gals are coming back from their time in the service, and uh, there are seriously, uh, there is seriously a problem with them fitting back in, uh, in a lot of cases, not all, but a lot of cases. Uh, in my case, uh, the farm was really helpful. Um, really helpful because you can keep your hands in the dirt and stay grounded, right? And then you can work your way up from then, from there. I'm not saying that everybody needs to be a farmer, but it's a good place to start. Our Anyone Can Farm program is a series of workshops. Start on Friday, go Saturday and Sunday. We have them broken down into curriculums. One is poultry, pastured poultry, and we go through everything from a baby chick, uh, receiving baby chicks, to slaughtering the animals and packaging and, pro and getting them ready for sale in the marketplace. Very good. When a person leaves here, they'll be an expert and they'll know how to do this. They can actually go out and make money doing it. Um, poultry is a, a gateway animal. Um, it, it gets you into livestock because you don't need a lot of land to do it and, uh, and the return is really quick on it. And we've, we've done well with it. And we feel as though we want to share that with as many people as we possibly can. Also, we do rotational grazing of cattle, we do pastured pork, um, 
And then we have a whole series on permaculture and biochar that we want to share as well. Now, there's a cost for it, but we have a dormitory right here on the farm. And um, classes are starting May 10th. And you, to find out about this, you can go to anyonecanfarm.com. There are 64 hours left on our fundraising event. 64 hours. Our goal was to make 75 grand for renovations. Um, we made 11. Uh, that paid for the flooring, paid for the, going to pay for the window coverings and uh, bunk beds to go in there. We still need more money, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go anyway, and that's just how we are. We're going to go anyway with what we have. And I want to encourage. I've had uh, correspondence with several GIs, uh, retired and and not retired, uh, if they can come and that if it's uh, accredited. Well, uh, it is accredited. I accredit it. And uh, my wife accredits it, too. And so does uh, one of our great Pyrenees. She accredits it, too. So come on. Uh, if you can't afford it, call me and we'll work something out. Um, the classes are 500 bucks, 499 actually. And uh, it goes Friday through Sunday. We feed you. We put you up. We have a good time, and you leave here with a skill that you can go out and you can make some money with. And uh, also, it's a platform for other folks to come in that are experts in things that we're not. Um, we're not experts yet in vegetable production, but we're, we're working that direction. Okay, that's what I have to say for today. Um, please, um, we need donations for our, our legal fees on this. If they can run us dry, they already know that... Uh, by prolonging this, they can run us out. And uh, we can't let that happen. You guys have been really faithful. Um, one other thing that I really need, I need these videos shared. I need them shared far and wide. Um, some of you folks that have time to do this, if you could just make it your business to get these videos out there. Because what's happening here does have to do with ag agriculture in this case. But the broader implications of this are huge. Here is a regulatory agency, the DNR, that has decided that as of this day, a pig with a straight tail or a curly tail is illegal. And our people in government that are there to protect the citizens don't bat an eye at it. Uh, that's a real problem because if they can determine that one animal is invasive and therefore illegal, they can do that with any animal. And not only can they do it with an animal, they can do that with uh, an object. Let's say they don't like uh, Volkswagen cars or something, and they declare that they're illegal. That would be a bad thing for everybody that owns a Volkswagen. Then your Volkswagen, from having value, has no value, like what they've done with my farm. Um, we had a lot of stock here that had quite a bit of value on the open market, and now it has no value. As a matter of fact, it has become a detriment to me because I have to feed those animals. If I don't feed them and I just get rid of them, then I have no standing to be in court. And that's their game, you know. Um, we've tried to call them out, you know, if you think you want to come and arrest us, do it. Do it. You know, if you think you've got a good law. But uh, they don't, and so they're just pushing it down to the lowest level. You know what I have to say about that. All right, um, I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks for listening.